um, a career a little bit how I started off uh, near research and then perhaps uh, give a little bit of uh, guidance uh, uh, at the end what to uh, do next. So uh, in the next 15 minutes, I'll try to cover a little bit of my research and then perhaps uh, addressing issue on why we should do research, where to get funding and uh, sort of an example application, uh, how to uh, write up an application that I'll show that one. So. Um, so I'm not able to go to the next slide, just give me a second. OK, so uh, was that uh, during my SHO training days, I used to recognize that uh, most of the clinical questions could be answered by um, evidence based medicine. And during that time, there was uh, two famous websites called Archimedes, which is uh, uh, still done by archives and something called as best bets. So all you have to do was just to search a question. For example, you want to say, OK, should, should I do a lumbar puncture when the CRP is 50 or so? And then uh, it would look at all the evidence and it would give us um, a succinct uh, summary. So that was one of the simplest thing which I started thinking that, OK, fine, you can get evidence. Uh, you can get answers by uh, searching evidence. And then that kept on my interest. So then I thought, OK, what else can I do? Can I do some more training just purely in research, come off my clinical training? So that uh, my idea was if I can understand an article and then how to use all the uh, softwares and so on. So finally, these were the two main reasons which I thought, OK, can I make myself uh, better and, and can I uh, read a paper properly before uh, start applying it on my patients? And that's the research. And the project was just about looking at uh, uh, the growth restricted uh, monochoronic twins. I was just looking at they had uh, the bigger twin has a better IQ or the smaller twin had a lower IQ. So I finally got an MD out of uh, that study at uh, Newcastle University. But uh, just to look at monochoronic twins, so identical twins with a difference of more than 20 um, uh, birth weight and then um, using something called a tool called British. What I found was that there was a difference of uh, IQ of three points between the bigger twin and the smaller twin, but especially when you go dig deeper, when you look for math scores and memory scores, then you will see that there was a difference of about uh, nine points. So clearly I told that growth restriction did affect your uh, cognition in the later life, and this was my project and this was my conclusion of the study. But during this research, you had to go to the university for two years and you learn a lot of uh, uh, other skills, which I told I um, got um, uh, used to SPSS, how to use Excel, how to use uh, Word, especially writing thesis and stuff like that, and uh, learned a lot about statistics. So these were the allied skills which you can go, get when apart from doing your own project. So post uh, finishing my um, uh, research and my work, uh, clinical work in uh, UK, I returned back to India. At the same time, I just kept in touch with the Imperial College London, uh, where he runs an organization called the Center for Perinatal Neurosciences. And the focus of uh, outcomes both in India and in the world, uh, at the same time, if possible, affordable, good quality equipments for. Um, uh, so since joint PN, these are all the multiple CPN, and most of these studies are uh, currently. For example, the comet is about the cooling in uh, by recently published cool. Uh, involved and have been seeing all the babies in the public sector and not all the randomized control trials. So cooling some babies and cooling, of course, using to see if uh, an affordable machine like a tachotherm um, out of um, uh, 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 something which is customized to India and at a price of almost like thousand dollars. If the study comes post, then this is the machine which. Um, will be 
um, custom built for uh, indium so hopefully in august or september this year we should be able to get the results of this uh, study so this has been one of the main study which have been uh, involved in uh, india and that's the baby we're getting cool um, and helix Apart from the Helix study, uh, there is one more study which I have done with the Birmingham University. That's evaluation to see if we can detect sepsis uh, in the newborns. Uh, and then the current ongoing study, which both myself and Praveen, uh, sorry, uh, Mani and Praveen will also get involved, is the prevent study, where we are trying to see if we can prevent epilepsy by uh, reducing encephalopathy, so predominantly using care bundles um, uh, in obstetric care. A uh, couple more studies which uh, should start soon. One is the safe boost C trial and the epigenetics in HIE. So these are the uh, studies which uh, currently I am uh, involved in it. So that's done in my research starting from uh, 2004 or so, and that has been my journey so far. But uh, coming to uh, others who are there out in the world, why should we do research? So still the simplest thing would be those who are doing MD or DNB or DM, still your thesis dissertation is still there and you need to look for a project. Predominantly it ends up being a single center study, but uh, there are many people who are still thinking about doing a multi-center study and how to go about those things. And of course, in the current COVID time, things yet to be discovered or invented. So COVID vaccine is still the hot topic. Many people are, um, going into that thing. So a lot of things to be discovered still. And of course, if none of it um, matter to you, then the final thing should really matter in the sense like you'd never know what research comes out and you think, do you need to follow it or not? And the typical example is the recent uh, Lancet publication of the hydroxychloroquine, where uh, if you had uh, accepted the findings, then you were practicing that. Whereas if you need to know clearly, appraise the articles and just to see right through it, that is it done properly or not? Or if you want to do some systematic reviews, and this is one of the easiest way to do it. You don't need to do a study. You can just look at the um, acceptable evidence. You can do a systematic uh, review and give out your uh, final uh, conclusion. So main reasons why people get to research now. Um, in terms of funding, there are multiple options. Um, so the most uh, common one which many people will do will be the DBT Welcome Trust. Uh, that is the India Alliance. If you just go for the India Alliance um, website, and this is where you will get a lot of funding options for starting from early career, then intermediate, and then senior fellowships, and so on. So um, depending on which uh, thing you apply, which career, the funding ranges from somewhere around 1.7 crores up to 4 crores, 5 crores. So uh, very well funded, but it's extremely competitive and uh, worth trying if you want to look into this option. Of course, uh, ICMR funds, and um, I've not uh, ever used ICMR funding, but um, that is one more uh, funding option. Uh, Department of Science and Technology, DST, has some found, uh, funding, but neither of them I have uh, used uh, at present. Tata Foundation uh, is fairly open-minded, fairly competitive, and a good chance of uh, getting in Tata Foundation. And these are all big players. They all give good amount of money. Finally comes the, uh, the Gates Foundation, the Grand Challenges. They also give good amount of money. So somewhere, if you're looking for funding more than one crore or two crores or something, these are the bigger players to uh, apply for. But if you're looking for a smaller project and where you don't require a, a major funding, then there are uh, smaller funding options. Who will be able to give a small amount of money, for example, starting from uh, the Child Trust Foundation um, from Chennai, they do fund, uh, funding. Uh, there is the World of Academic Sciences called TWAS. You can look into that one. And they're all fellowships. You can easily get for, 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 for fellowships. Adani Foundation gives um, funding. Um, then there is this uh, CERB, which is uh, Science and Engineering Research Board. So they are not purely focused on medicine, medicine, but they are all in general science. So there will be a lot of other competitive fields who will be applying for this one. A DHR is also a good uh, one. And finally, the uh, Hargobind so in Kurana scholarship is there. Uh, it is in uh, partnership with the Indo-US uh, technology. So these are all the funders who will be able to fund uh, small studies, single center studies, and so on. So uh, depending on where you want to apply, you can choose a bigger player or a, a smaller player. 
uh, important thing for any uh, research is uh, three things we call as three p's um how what, place which means at which institution or, or which university you are doing this particular study and who are all the people involved so that uh, carries a huge weightage on your application and the second thing is the person that is yourself who's doing the study what's his credibility and what uh, has she or she achieved in the past so that is the second p people look for and the third p is actually the project itself uh, so in order it's always the place which goes first then the person and finally the project p people always think the project is more important but actually it is the place and the person which is more important project can be done and the, what they look for is it can be done in that specific time period because they give a four year funding means you have to finish that uh, funding in four years and will it have a significant impact so these are all the three p's um, uh, people uh, look for i'll give you a quick example of a grant application which i have recently written i just need to exit this uh, presentation to show that or perhaps what i'll do is i'll let money present next his thoughts and then i'll show the grant application um so the other thing which um, praveen wanted me to talk about is that if people can't apply for funding and then um, what how to do a study without funding and what is the exact process so first and foremost once you are ready with the study you should have a protocol so uh, write up a protocol and then uh, have a case record form i'll show you a sample case record form and then also prepare some patient information leaflets what you want to submit it so these three important things you need to submit to your for ethics approval so uh, until the first three are ready you will not be able to go for ethics approval post ethics approval uh, you will have a meeting and if ethics are so then if you are funded look for staff recruit some staff if you are not funded then the challenge is to motivate the existing staff to run the study for you so this is where all your people skills uh, come into picture and then once uh, you are able to start the study then comes data collection then you'll be analyzing the data and then finally you will be publishing or uh, um, presenting these uh, studies so uh, that is pretty much what you will be doing when uh, you want to start a study from scratch this is how you will go a idea about how to do the study i still feel that you need to have a appropriate study questions once you have the study question then design the study if you want to do a observational study or you want to do a randomized uh, study then you decide on the based on your question then choose your population properly have a proper inclusion exclusion criteria and then sample recruitment and then onwards it's uh, straightforward uh, before uh, going through the make sure your measurements are completely reliable and has a proper validity of those measurements yeah and then uh, data and Inclusion. So that is pretty much um, how a study will run uh, on its own. But uh, all the things um, uh, which uh, uh, you want to start a study from the grassroots, and this is where you will need to look into. I think that's pretty much what I wanted to cover in this one. I'll do sample uh, um, examples of uh, the grant application I've written and also the case record forms and. So I'll probably hand over to Mani, let Mani uh, talk about his experience, and then I'll probably show these things. Thank you. I'll stop. I mean, ah, money is taken. Okay, that's fine. Yeah. Well, can you see can you see everything what i was showing money i could uh, just see the screen but i couldn't hear anything now 
now i can't see the screen yeah. can you see now yeah i think thanks praveen for inviting me uh, we all go through a uh, certain type of uh, uh, career during the research how we wanted to be what uh, we wanted to do i think I, i also had a similar sort of career ravi uh, as described just now uh, initially what i what was the reason for me to enter research is uh, initially I, wa i was very very interested um when i went to uk uh, obviously uh, for the first reason is uh, we want to uplift economically uh, that is one there always second thing i always thought uh, the research process and uh, the papers come out of uk us canada how how does that done that inter that interest was always there i wanted to understand the process whether i could get into that or not i wasn't sure but i always had that interest second reason initially wanted to see was when I, whenever we read papers uh, we also wanted to be uh, have, have our name in the publication and when i see our name uh, we feel happy so that was another reason so should should go into the proper research and publish papers so that that was my another reason to go into research when we see the professors and scientists uh, in the universities uh, when we started working in uk uh, the respect they had the amount of uh, clinical knowledge and uh, research knowledge they had was enormous and that always fascinated me to go into the research side uh, compared to pure clinician uh, when you combine the research along with the clinical work uh, the approach of uh, any small issue in a newborn is uh, completely different so which uh, made me go into the research obviously it also helps us to progress in the career because i wanted to do neonatology Well, when you go into a, want to do a neonatology you have to apply like similar to dm you have to apply for a grid training in neonatology for that you need to show some difference in your career what you have done what you want to do sort of thing so when you do do research that is a plus point for you to enter into neonatal career so that is another reason i wanted to do research that was around 2005 to 2007 these are all the thought process for me once i entered research why i really still continue to want to uh, do research is uh, the knowledge acquiring factor is very important um, when you feel like when you work in uh, area of hie neonatal encephalopathy you try to read across the globe what is happening for that uh, specific area in terms of intervention diagnosis uh, how uh the brain works what are the insults and uh, what can you make a difference what are other people working on the difference and how can you implement at your practice so, so a lot of knowledge acquiring happened in that specific area that was uh, i wanted to continue that process because i want to evolve in that area it's also the motivation from the group uh, uh, that i want continued because they are, if you are in touch with the great people like sudin tail and uh, Okay. Uh, Sita Shankaran uh, and uh, other people that we are involved, the amount of uh, uh, the, how they carry themselves in the research, that also very, was very important for me to continue. When you are in research, you think about it, it's not like routine RDS that we treat or meconium we treat. It's also something that uh, you sit and think about uh, projects. You sit and think about uh, what sort of ideas we can bring into a new project. or if it is a something project already ongoing if we come into a problem how we solve this problem so you always continue to think new things so that innovative approach was uh, very important for me uh, i think so that's why i want to continue in this research area it's also gives greater satisfaction when you contribute to the scientific world in terms of new findings and people start start to use your finding uh, that uh, that is a interesting fact for us and when you start when you, initially when i just wanted to see the name but now i really want to see and publish in high impact journals like lancet nejm and uh, other high impact journals uh, that that also continues uh, my interest towards research uh, all said then continuously all something philosophical has to be there for you uh, because all all you know is once you achieve money fame or uh, career whatever the maximum then you cannot comes to a standstill it is a continuous evolving process what uh, 
if you search what, why are you in this world and the continuous evolving process for me happens in the research side of the world much more than the clinical side so that's why i wanted to continue and enter research i think this is what i keep giving me in research this can be variable for many people but i just wanted to share why i i'm still in research or these things so in terms of my research career uh, we were we, around 2005 2007 uh, it's my basic and pediatric training as a registrar in uk uh, you get a number you get to the deanery you, they train you in the basic pediatrics neonatology community pediatrics sort of things during that time i really wanted to do research i went and uh, met few people in london london as a area where uh, each and every hospital and university specializes on specific uh, part of the research so for ucl and imperial has a brain research uh, kings college has a respiratory research brompton had a cardiology research and uh, other parts like uh, birmingham and all uh, had a gastroenterology research so i i was looking around this and then uh, i initially had an inclination towards brain during my post graduation in icih itself i really like the pathogenesis in the brain and things so i wanted to join ucl or imperial so fortunately i got into ucl and uh, that is when uh, i joined them as a neuroimaging fellow uh, during my training itself i took time off the program to do this research for 3 years so we uh, they focus on hie uh, we all know about hie how bad it is i'm not going to go through this uh, just to tell you 4 million babies die and 1 million of this is due to asphyxia they can see the very how high it is and uh, during that time cooling has been the standard of care but people are working on because the cooling alone is not enough people are working on other interventions like xenon amiloride melatonin uh, for extra addition to this uh, cooling so that we can improve the neurodevelopmental outcome uh, how we can uh, come to standard of practice so if you take cooling cooling took around 20 years to come into practice from the time it started on research so that is too long for any intervention to work or make it work so my research was focusing on how we can reduce the shortening time of translating this pre clinical studies to a clinical studies to a clinical intervention how we can get into the practice so another 20 years if we work on one medicine and another 20 years it will take uh, generations before we can find a cure for hie so for me uh, focusing on this is uh, uh, mrs so mrs is uh, spectroscopy where we can see changes in the hie with by having a high lactate and low na during the severity of hie instead of using a long term outcome like adverse neurodevelopmental outcome uh, when you do bailey's at 2 years can we use these sort of markers uh, with which we can do it in the 7 days so if we do a study and you can find the outcome in 7 days instead of 2 years waiting for it the time duration of the studies will come down um, drastically and then we can easily translate from clinical clinical to the clinical as well as the uh, practice part of it so that was my area of research and particularly mrs was the research so we looked at the mr mr biomarkers in hie and we found mrs is the best uh, biomarker so i focused my research on mrs biomarker in ucl we had this three hypothesis for my research uh, which uh, basically looking at the mrs biomarker on this piglet we had who we give uh, asphyxia uh, on arrival and then give various interventions like therapeutic hypothermia plus xenon plus amiloride plus melatonin and various sort of uh, intervention and monitor the mrs during that time and also we once 48 hours is over we look we dissect the brain and then look at the histology to look for apoptosis and cell death and compare this mrs to the cell death does it correlate the lactate to na rise to the uh, cell death uh, apoptosis number of counts and this does this treatment work well very well with this and can be can we use this mrs as a uh, biomarker instead of neurodevelopmental outcome these are my uh, clinical and uh, preclinical hypothesis so one of the study we included is xenon study where we gave normothermia xenon hypothermia hypothermia plus xenon we found xenon and therapeutic hypothermia combined reduced the lactate to na in mrs it also you know, caused the uh, there is a good correlation between the lactate na with all the uh, cell markers that we saw post death and in the staining in both the studies so that was good and this are the you can see the slides of pathogenesis uh, pathology uh, in the top one is hne staining in the middle one is the tunnel which stains for apoptosis and the caspase is also for apoptosis you can see the dark spots in the second column where it is untreated 
uh, there are a lot of black spots. And compared to the combined, it's all very less. Combined treatment of xenon and hypothalamia, it, uh, there are le less hypoplasmia. And similarly, in the clinical babies where we cooled them and we looked at the MRS for them, when, uh, when the lactate to NAA in MRS was high, you can see the, uh, uh, in the normothermia and the hypothermia, the abnormal outcome, uh, unfavorable outcome, lactate to NAA was very high. But in the favorable outcome, lactate to NAA was very low. So it correlates with the cell histology in the animal model. It correlates with the neurodevelopmental outcome in the clinical babies. So we thought that is a good uh, biomarker. So we should be using that as a translational biomarker. And based on this current xenon study published a couple of years ago from uh, King's College, uh, sorry, Evelyn Children's Hospital, is has used MRS biomarker based on our study uh, only. And uh, uh, unfortunately, xenon was not uh, made uh, proven as a useful uh, synergistic medicine using that. But maybe the Imperial College study with the xenon, maybe we will come out and we'll learn more about xenon on that. So that was to summarize my study over the three years, what, what I did working with the piglet uh, animal model. Uh, it was a great experience, great learning experience, great professional experience we had. These are the team uh, which, uh, which we worked under. So Nicola Robertson uh, is a professor of neonatology. She's, she's the lead for research in neonatal neurology at UCL. And Gena Raivich is a histological uh, professor. Yeah, he also works in UCL and he helped me with a great deal of working with the histology. And a lot of physicists did the MRI scan for us. Uh, Freddy was the CL lead for them. Alan and David were the physicists who we worked with constantly. Uh, Stuart was the lab manager, uh, where he taught me about all the animals, how we work with them, animal licensing, and etc. And all the other names were my colleagues, including Sudhien Thail, during that time. So that, that is to tell about research. If somebody is starting from the basic, how you want to uh, start a career in the search or a journey in the search, I, I want to say a couple of points before I finish. Um, basically, uh, I think more and more we read, the, we get the gist of what people are doing and how, what is the information out there and what we are trying to find. And so start reading a lot of papers, uh, particularly develop an interest in a specific area. If, if it's neonatology is a very, very broad area. If you do want to develop an interest, you, you may be interested in RDS, you may be interested in NEC, you may be interested in encephalopathy. So it, it does vary depending on where you want to read more and work more, make a difference in the community. So read along and develop a specific area of interest. And when you attend research conferences, uh, you will know that how what are the sorts of paper published and particularly the high quality conferences are passed, a periodic academic society uh, in the US and Canada, it happens every year. Uh, that would be one thing which we recommend you to attend and uh, learn how to do research during research methodology course and uh, pursue, pursue with that. Uh, if you just do a course and don't do anything after that, it may not continue. So learn, learn to do that. And uh, uh, of course, out of all, the commitment is very, very important. If you're really interested and committed, then only the research career will go. The research is not like a clinical work, uh, like, uh, for example, you, you, even if you are not that much committed, you can still remember all the things that you want to do in clinical side. May not, research is not the same that you know, what you would want to do. What I, I can show you this, in 2005 to 2007, I, I started reading and uh, first thing everybody does is the case report publication. This is my first, first, very first publication as a case report. Uh, I published in Indian Pediatrics when I was working in Bastildon in UK. That was my, during my co-training. And uh, I was really glad to see my name. And uh, so I thought, okay, let me publish one more case report and did the second case from there. So now I, after publishing two case report, I had the confidence and I went to UCL, worked with Sudin. And uh, Sudin gave me a task of doing the systematic review, uh, which we both did. And uh, um, seeing in the pediatrics journal, my name as a second author was very uh, happy. And that uh, pursued my strong interest in research. And uh, continuing that, I wanted to be first author, and I did this uh, systematic review later on. So this is how my journey uh, of seeing my names as a uh, case report, second author, first author, and it's continuing. I hope uh, we'll do more high impact journals uh, of these sort of publications. If at all, uh, you you cannot start with a systematic review as your systematic career, and as Ravi was mentioning, we always uh, read Archimedes and best bets uh, as the uh, best evidence topics. 
so you can also do one of them like this i uh, i did this in the archimedes in adc so you can ask one question uh, uh, which comes commonly whatever uh, is interested in there you try to find some evidence for that and uh, it doesn't take a long time it uh, it can one or two people or maximum three you can work together and uh, find the answer for this and get it published this also uh, gives you satisfaction uh, towards that and final couple of slides what i want to say is uh, probably last slide at this uh, what i want to say how research has helped me and keep me going uh, is uh, as i said knowledge appearing uh, there's no denying that i learned a lot uh, and i'm still continuing to learn a lot in there there are certain skills i developed like presenting writing uh, reading and appraising a specific article and uh, statistics and uh, i got interested in statistics i went on and did a fellowship in epidemiology and bio biostatistics uh, online course over the last year uh, with the uh, australian university so that gave me more uh, knowledge on statistics um, so uh, that is there and obviously my career has progressed in terms of uh, research as well as uh, the clinical part of it um, it uh, made me personally it also made me um, more thinking person and uh, open mindedness uh, in terms of analyzing a situation whether uh, it's a clinical situation or even with the life uh, also personal life also and a uh, great deal of uh, planning and organization has become part of my life because of the research uh, so whenever i do any task uh, i do think about how we are going to how we can plan and think so the, that i learned it through the research so this is what i wanted to cover uh, hope it was useful and but actually i wanted to be a q and a more of uh, what uh, people wanted to ask and how we we can be how help and how anybody can be uh, involved in the research sort of thing so i'll leave it to praveen and ravi and we can discuss as the question comes thank you ravi and money excellent ravi do you want to show the uh, yeah. grant application Sure. Yeah. So let me just share the screen and um, sorry. Yeah. Uh, this is the India. Is uh, who are looking into. Uh, Medical research, but to go for the uh, medical. As you go into that, uh, you will see fellowships which are available. Uh, early career, intermediate, or senior fellowships, depending on where. That is R four, and if as you can see, uh, you can start with early career almost like one point nine crores. Uh, seven crores. And they, that also, they will also pay you a salary, uh, so you can use a little bit of the funding for your salary as well in any of these uh, uh, studies. So, uh, and uh, these are all sort of my applications. Uh, uh, so, this this one I wanted to look into epigenetics uh, in uh, HIE. Lack thing. Patient form looks, and as I told, um, the three P's are more important for the uh, um, uh, place where you're going to do it, and then the person and epigenetic. In, uh, Bed study and then look at the epigenetic changes in these babies and can we start predicting the long term outcome of these babies? But which I wanted to focus. Um, so uh, uh, just, just give me a second. I just wanted to get down a little bit. Yeah. So uh, when you write your project, uh, whichever you just uh, focus on a couple of things, uh, which is basically. To the just a quick introduction about the project, but always focus on something which many people ignore in any of this grant application. Always 
uh, aspect of that particular topic and then on any of the article inclusion exclusion criteria and so on so this let me i can tell you some more grants which i have written so this is which i wrote here for this one finnishian scientist iug based using just mri so this is my other kind of application Also, uh, a uh, protocol with a lot of people will be involved in the study, but uh, uh, I'm sure uh, after a lot of uh, um, uh, what do you call brainstorming, you finally come up with a protocol, and uh, protocol uh, will have everything. So you will have to have a consent form. Uh, I'll show you a rough example of how a uh, uh, consent form. This is the parent information leaflet. Make sure you need to have uh, information like what you're going to give to parents uh, if any study uh, when they're involved and in different different languages uh, depending on where you're doing. And of course, uh, sorry about that, not that one. And then the other one, uh, yeah, and also the consent form. So you, these are all the documents which you will need to submit to your ethics committee. So your protocol, your consent form, parent information uh, leaflet. And also, of course, uh, one case record form. I thought I'll show you a case record form. I'm not able to see it now. So these are all the documents. If anyone is interested, I'm sure I'll be quite happy to uh, share with you. Thank you very much, guys. Praveen? Thank you. Thank you both for uh, sharing your experiences and the focusing on research, especially in neonatology. I want to ask. Uh, uh, one question, Ravi. Maybe you could answer this. Um, yeah. How does one get an idea of the research, especially the idea which if it carries on for a long term? Um, for example, if you see the cap trial now, ongoing publications are still coming in. So, how does get started with an idea? Um, I mean, it, it is the idea comes in your day-to-day -day practice. It's your Current problem, what you're facing. For example, as um, Mani showed, um, one of the commonest problem is should we give neurantidine for babies uh, who have uh, bleeding? And that's a question which you come up with. And then you say, okay, fine, let me look in what's being done. So all these uh, questions are some of the clinical questions which you come across in day to day life. And then you decide, okay, it's, it's been bugging me so much, what should I do next? And that's how uh, you look for evidence. If there's no evidence available, then you start a study. So that is the easiest way to start about a study. Mani, do you have anything to add to that? Well, so I think when you want to start a study, it varies, isn't it? So if you take a clean study or a EPQ study, they keep on doing it and publishing at various forms, various uh, ways. In the, and um, that that depends on the question what we want to do. Everybody wants to do a long longer study and everybody thinks that they have the question to answer that uh, thing. So if you take a helix study, it will be a longer study. So we have done five years and we are finding an answer in the next couple of months whether therapeutic hypothermia works in India or not. Based on that, we will be continuing another 10 to 15 years of work, whether it works or it doesn't work. There will always be work continuing and related to that. So it depends on the team, how you work and what you want to work. It takes a longer journey. If at all you are a clinician starting now, then you start with the smaller question and then build it on that and then build with the team, build with the uh, uh, career. That's how it goes. Okay, thank you. So, so I kind of a this uh, uh, question in a way that the purpose is okay. How do you have an intact brain in that sense, right? In that you have ideas, sub ideas, and then you go on researching uh, uh, for more answers to it. Um, you did bring about money, the uh, team uh, point of view. So that's where I wanted to ask: What are the challenges of uh, uh, you know conducting a multi-centric trials, and you know, how does one go about building up the team for that? 
yeah it's uh, it's not easy at all so within uk itself we have problems and when you come out of the country and do multi center international study it will be a, it will face lot of challenges one thing uh, if if you go if you take one by one the one thing which is very important is the uh, communication and attitude of the primary researcher how well uh, a, a person who leads the team and how you communicate with the uh, local team and uh, how what, what are your intentions and uh, giving equal opportunity in all areas uh, in terms of writing in terms of publication in terms of funding and uh, whether we feel all have the same intention of improving the neonatal community or improving the academic uh, area of that the university or improving the knowledge of a specific people so it comes along all these lines and if you have intention in along these lines then you join together we always have a, some form of contact so for example sudin uh, always had a good relationship with the people in india because he, he, him being coming from india and in kerala and uh, we we me and ravi also have worked in places in india so we we can also talk to people and work on that it also happens the other way around uh, why we want to bring that research uh, money research and knowledge to that and thereby improving our own country uh, academic career as well as the thing but there are a lot of challenges if you don't work together if you are not a team working person uh, you use the positiveness of the other team towards you and then you try to avoid the negative aspects of that Uh, and uh, but all, all comes to the attitude and the communication that how do you practice uh, across the team so you need to have excellent high level communication uh, going between the teams uh, otherwise it we will run into trouble okay thank you um ravi the, to do the research you have to have a committed uh you, you know you should have committed timing for timings for that how do you balance your clinical work um, and also the research work so uh, again on which stage you are in uh, when you are finding your feet in research and then um, you want to learn about the statistics you want to learn about uh, uh, critical appraisal and so on so in the early phase then perhaps one of the easiest thing is if you can come out of your clinical training take time off and focus exclusively on the research so that you can get a very strong foundation and that's pretty much most of the um, how most of the uh, research careers work in the uk you come out for your clinical training and do this thing and during that time you do your project so you are familiar with um, uh, what to do in the project and also what are the additional generic skills you will get out of the project once you have got these generic skills then the next focus only remains on the project so then it becomes uh, easier uh, for you to run your clinical work and then perhaps uh, even uh, in a week uh, if you can dedicate uh, one or uh, one one and a half day uh, just to write up uh, the project or um, uh, supervise and stuff like that so then it is still okay but if you're starting off and then you still you will need to dedicate uh, more time so that you can get all the skills once you are uh, got most of generic skills then it might be easier to go on it is little bit difficult in the early stage isn't it so uh, early stage uh, you have to work hard uh, work hard at least uh, i i uh, during my 3 years i did research uh, i had to work with the nhs job for 50% uh, because uh, the funding uh, for independent researcher is not that much and uh, my team did not have funding for the salary for my job so i worked with nhs and during my weekends and extra evenings uh, i worked on the research and did the night shifts and uh, with the piglet and uh, doing the statistics and working on the histology and things but once you kind of finish uh, your degree post uh, phd or md you can apply for funding yourself or uh, team funding then uh, uh, that would uh, initiate your career towards that 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 you can balance your little bit but initial 3 4 years you have to work hard uh, learning the trade and uh, funding for you so that will be a little bit of difficult uh, 
challenge. So it's a commitment that one uh, should be looking yeah. at for a long term. Uh, um, regarding, since both style like Helix, which is completed, are there any objective markers of a collaboration? Ravi, could you take up this question? Uh, because I asked uh, Mani about collaboration before. Um, how do you select first? Uh, you know, who should I collaborate with? And then how do you kind of, uh, 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 do you have any objective markers of that? Again, it boils down to the same three P's, I say. So uh, number one, still, I mean, the project is always at the bottom. It's the place. So for example, for the prevent study, uh, we wanted to look for a place where we'll have highest amount of uh, deliveries and uh, in the very highest incidence of uh, HIE. So then you scan through uh, the whole of India or uh, and then you identify those places. You do a survey and then you identify the place first. Then once you identify the place, then second comes the person. Do I know anyone in that particular place? Do I know that person, whether we'll be able to finish the project in that time period? What are other uh, local uh, um, anticipated uh, challenges we can uh, see? So uh, those two are the key important thing when we want to start a project. The, then the third thing is the project. Project you always know. So for example, we knew what is the project here in Prevent. It is just the place and the person are the key. So once you know the first two, then it's a complete uh, downhill. So for example, for Helix as well, we clearly knew which uh, folk areas where we had to focus. So we focused on Indira Gandhi, which was ISA. Uh, had a um, outbound referral of HIE babies. Similarly, uh, we focused in uh, Chennai and in Kerala. We also wanted to take Vani Vilas at that point of time, but it was the other challenges which went against. And so as a result, we couldn't do Vani Vilas, the helix in Vani Vilas. So, but for the prevent, we are able to do it. So if you just focus on the first two, the uh, place and the person, then uh, you can run a very successful uh, collaborative study. No, I guess there are no objective way of saying it. I think it's a way that uh, how we collaborated for Helix for the last five years that has given confidence to talk to more people. And during the research conferences and meetings, people uh, have to network. The only reason all the researchers go to all research meeting is to network. That was the primary reason to collaborate, to get funding, to get ideas to get people to work for them, to go and learn from them. So there are so many opportunities to network. So that's how people meet uh, other people and then see who is interested, how they can help us uh, sort of thing. So it takes a longer process, but there are no clear ways of telling this will work or that will won't work. So for example, Helix worked in Chennai, but I don't think prevent will happen in Chennai. We don't know. We may, it may happen, may not happen. So there are several obstacles we face uh, during that time. So uh, it, it, it uh, happens. So with the time only we can say there are no clear cut markers for OK, this will work, this won't work. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. for uh, Mani, you did mention about uh, um, in UK, uh, different uh, 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 teams are focusing on parts of uh, you know research, uh, lung, brain, uh, um, like that, or prematurity. Um, do you see that happening in India or, you know, what are the challenges you see in India, especially in relation to uh, neonatal research? Uh, yeah, so I, I, I have uh, uh, spoken to a few people who are doing active research in India and uh, uh, currently at the moment, the research in India initiated by India and done in India only in India is uh, majority of them are a thesis based research. Uh, either for the super specialty uh, like the DM neonatology or DNB neonatology or in the MD pediatric level. So they have the time constraint of three years and within that three years, what you, they want to do, what can a small project do and then how they can finish. That's the way they are looking at as of now. And uh, institutions like AIMS, PGI, uh, uh, I, I can see that uh, people w work on all aspects of area as well. So the, my initial interaction for the last couple of years, uh, uh, be it whether it's uh, Dr. Srinivas Murthy or uh, somebody, somebody else from Chandigarh or somebody else from Ames, we are telling them, uh, asking them why you cannot focus on one single area uh, is because of this PG-focused research area. 
if you take uh, helix tire we have been doing it for 5 years and it will take another 2 years before anything comes out of it so we we can't do a thesis on this helix study so if we want to do a high quality proper research it will take a longer time and uh, effort and also uh, money and people to come committed towards that so it is the system which has to change slightly uh, for these premier institutions uh, uh, to come into this form of research well, we know why they do the pg thesis research because that has to be done that has to be done but it can be a part of helix uh, study if you take there can be a several theses can be combined and people can work on those things so we we should think about a larger study and we should get the post graduates and super specialty graduates to work on those areas and uh, develop their interest so uh, i think it will take a longer time another 10 to 20 years before people work on specific areas and call them experts in that areas uh, but uh, I, I hope it will happen uh, at the moment because of the uh, training pg post graduation superficial orientation is there it is a little bit difficult i think system has to change a bit Yeah, the motivation, the system. But apart from that, do you uh, uh, see any challenges with the regulations uh, and the funding uh, aspect as well, Ravi, in India, which might uh, kind of uh, create roadblocks for people to do research? Yeah, I mean, um, uh, you see all these fundings which I've shown you. So the application I finished in May and the project will only start in next September, which means there's a delay of almost one, one and a half years before uh, you get the funding. So as money was telling, you have a limited period of three years to finish your uh, uh, DM or DNB, and then uh, you can't really apply for funding because it takes such a long time. The only way to answer this question is that the departments should start running the studies, uh, and then the project. The project will go for about five to six years or seven years. So the department should get the ethical approval, uh, get the funding sorted. If there is um, uh, funding coming from outside, then you should get the HMSC clearance, uh, or ICMR approval. All those things should be done by the permanent staff in the department. Whereas once the project is going on, then the PGs can take up one aspect of that project and work it on their thesis. That is the only way where we can see a high quality research coming out uh, from India. Praveen, could you hear me? I can hear you. But I think Praveen has gone. He's there. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, okay. Thank you. Um, so from my side, the final question would be, what is the uh, future? I mean, what are you guys planning um, in the. Yeah, so I was just asking, what is the uh, future in terms of, you know, what are you guys? Uh... Hello, so my, my plan was always uh, compared to when you have a take Imperial College in the UK, they have a center in uh, Africa to do multiple research, long-term research in uh, all areas of domain uh, that they do research in adults and uh, uh, neonatology and things. So my uh, long-term vision along with Ravi and Sudin is to start a similar center uh, in India where we can collaborate with the Imperial College or any other university abroad and continue to do the research uh, uh, very systematically uh, in India for a longer duration. If you have a center and get the funding process system in place, it is easier to do rather than just collaborating and doing it for a brief period. So that is our idea. That's when we started this. We want a perinatal trials unit uh, where we can do funding and systematically do things to that way. So I, I, we, we are hoping, me, Ravi and Sudhin are hoping, next 15 to 20 years, we'll be doing, uh, continue to do a lot of research in India in collaboration with them, which will make clear guidance for the government and uh, uh, benefit for the public. Yeah, I agree. That's pretty much uh, what okay. money is for. Okay. Yeah, I was just going to add uh, uh, how or what kind of opportunities I can have with uh, your team um, based in Imperial. 
So, for example, we initially advertised for a fellow uh, to take up this project, and we, in fact, for the prevent study, we have uh, appointed uh, uh, one of the doctors uh, to be uh, lead as well. Um, and the idea is that in the long term, we would like to get a, a MD or a PhD for uh, such uh, particular uh, people who join the prenatal trials unit. Similarly, we have recruited several nurses. Um, who are part of the study and it's just not only just work for them but uh, educating them and running their own small projects and then uh, asking giving them opportunities to fly abroad uh, publish or sorry, present in major conferences and so on so that is our aim in the sense like to train people both doctors and nurses and um, uh, be a part of the prenatal trials unit that's what our vision is Yeah, there will be a lot of opportunities, Praveen, uh, for all the doctors and nurses in the future also. Yeah, uh, th thank you both. Um, there's one question from Ravi Kiran. He's asking, you know, what about uh, small units and how do they participate in research or how do they plan research? So, as I said, it's not about the small unit or bigger unit. Uh, it's about the interest and commitment if somebody wants to be in research. So, you can start your uh, interest and register your interest to us. And uh, whenever there's an opportunity, we can always involve uh, you. And in the meantime, it's important to equip oneself uh, with the research uh, to, uh, to capable of doing research, project, collaborating and uh, understanding research in uh, some way, either presenting a case report or uh, writing case report uh, or doing basically what you can find the uh, answer to a question, things like that. Um, so, uh, Ravi, anything you want to add? No, I agree. So that is it. So uh, you can start. The simplest thing is uh, observe your own things. Get a data from your own unit. So small or big, it all matters is that can do you have a data? Can you have, tell me how many babies were admitted in the last one year? what is what and uh, choose one particular area of your interest and look into specifically into that and then publish that data out first so that is the starting point once you publish people will look at you then they want to network with you that is the easiest way if any unit is there it's the data from your unit and that data has to be published that is where we start Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, you both. Um, there are no questions uh, that I could see there.